Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we'll be talking about components, which is another superpower of Figma. Obviously, it already exists in Sketch and XD, but let's just talk about components. And before I begin, I'd just like to say, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon to be notified of any videos that are going to be coming through. Do let me know in the comments if you'd like to see anything specific, but without further ado, let's just get started. So what are components? Well, components are things that you create if you want to reuse a particular pattern, reuse a particular element, and you create a component out of that so you can reuse it in multiple places yet control how it appears from one single master element. As an example, if I just get started, first of all, let's just go ahead and create a desktop page here and let's just create a button component. So I'm gonna say button text. Let me just uh, bring that down to 16. I'm gonna press shift A and as you can see I have I'm also gonna add like some icons to the left and the right let's just go ahead and do that and let me just add a background to it as well so we can see the background so here's the background I'm just gonna go ahead and select these two and I'm gonna say that I want to use the font awesome pro icons so I'm gonna say this is gonna be the left minus arrow left or probably arrow minus left and similarly I'm gonna go here and let's say arrow minus right so we have th this button and let's say I'm gonna give the spacing in between of these arrows to be 12 I'm gonna give the padding on the top and the left to be uh, top and the bottom to be 8 and on the left and the right to be I think 16 that probably looks good or probably 12 and then 16 so here we have a button I'm gonna give it a border radius as well so we have a button like this and I'm gonna disable the uh, the arrows by default you can disable them by pressing command shift H which is going to hide these and I'm going to call this a button so you can create you can make any frame or any object or any group or any vector a button by pressing the command option K key you can obviously convert it to a component by pressing this button here so once you do that as you can see this is a component and the way that you see it obviously you have some properties here you can add the description the documentation link add variants to it which we will be covering in the next video uh, but this basically uh, converts into a component when you see it all purple like that so when you have a component that's purple like this which is an unfilled sort of a, a polygon or a rectangle or a square then you can consider it an instance if it's purple and it's filled like this you can consider that a base component so now let's say if we call this a button and now if let's say i have multiple instance of it i'm going to place it here now imagine if i were to update the text I, I can say updated button text now as you can see all of these properties are updating automatically the button is changing in multiple places and the power of this is imagine you have like let's say a hundred pages or a hundred uh different designs in Figma you can update the button originally you can change do some modifications on the original button and all of these things are just going to be updated so let's just do a command Z to actually just delete these instances one thing that I want to highlight is this button text that you see here you this needs to be unique currently it's obviously just following whatever is written there but I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to rename it to uh, button title or anything along those lines now as you can see if I let's say updated this particular thing is not changing so you can consider this a value that's that's now going to remain consistent and let's say if I go ahead and have a button here I can just update it. and as you can see the button title is consistent here as well I'm going to talk about like why that is important uh, as we move on in this video but let's just talk about how we actually go about like making this even more powerful so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna create a, a button component that's gonna have vari various uh, properties applied to it. As for example, it can be secondary, it can be primary, and it can be tertiary. So we're gonna have three styles. By default, I'm gonna say that this button is actually the base structure. So I'm gonna do that to actually have a singular base structure uh, being applied to my component styles. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to duplicate this by pressing the, op the option key. If I press the option key, it obviously creates an instance of this button. As you can see, it is an instance. Now I'm going to again give it a sh uh, press, gonna, I'm going to press like shift minus A to create an auto layout on top of it. By default, auto layout actually applies these properties to it. I'm just going to make it zero, zero. So, and just going to go ahead and I'm going to say this is going to be a button slash primary. Now slash is important because that's going to define that this is a property of a button. So we have a button and then we have a property uh, named primary. I'm going to go ahead and make this a component as well. I'm going to press enter to select 
Uh, obviously, I could just open it and then select the inner child. And I can go ahead and I can change this button background to be, let's say, a darker shade of blue. And I can say that this text is going to be, let's say, white. So this is the primary button. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to duplicate this button. I'm going to, uh, as you can see, this is an instance of the primary button. I don't want this instance particularly here. I just want to go ahead and create a separate button, which is going to be the secondary button. So I can detach this component by detaching. Uh, you can also detach it by pressing the command option B key. So now it's detached. It's a simple frame. Obviously, we have this base structure in there which we actually want and I'm going to name this secondary and I'm also I'm again going to create a component out of this. So now this is the secondary button. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say there are going to be some updates to the styling here. I'm going to say the button uh, bag the button text can be blue 600 and the button fill is going to be white and the button border or the stroke is actually going to be blue 600 and I'm going to make the stroke two pixels. Now you can see this is our secondary button and I'm going to go ahead and create another button here. I'm going to detach it and I'm going to make it tertiary and I'm going to again make it a component and for the tertiary button I'm just going to say hey it doesn't have a I'm going to press enter to select the base structure thing. I'm going to say it doesn't have a stroke but the uh, let's say the background for this is going to be a really light blue or something along those lines. So this is going to be our tertiary button. Obviously it's created and I'm going to create another button that's going to be a disabled button. So I'm just going to go here. I'm going to say this button is first of all detach it. I'm going to say this is disabled. I'm going to press enter to select the child. I'm going to remove the fill. I'm going to just choose a fill that's going to be a lighter gray. So something like this and I'm going to say that this text should also be a light shade of gray just to make sure that it looks disabled. And let's just make the gray a bit lighter. So this is the, or probably even darker I would say. So one thing that I do want to point out is if you select let's say the outer parent, you can see some of the select selection colors that are inside here. So you don't have to go inside and then change the fill from here. If you want, you can actually change the fill or replace the colors that you want directly from here. So I'm going to say that this is going to actually have a gray 400 or something. So I think this or probably a 300. I think this looks fine. Now this is a disabled button. I'm going to again make it a component. And here you have multiple components that are being used. I can go ahead and I can drag this button. I can say uh, I love this button. And as you can see, we have this actual primary button. But if I want to switch this button, I can actually click on this uh, drop down here which is actually going to link all of the buttons that I have here. You can also have a visual preview of this. I can say this is going to be a tertiary button or it's actually going to be a disabled button or it's going to be a secondary button. And now the important thing here is for example is the text is actually rem uh, remains consistent. The spacing remains consistent based on whatever we have set here. And the, the useful benefit of the base structure is since the base structure is actually being applied on all of these buttons, I can go ahead and I can make any padding or font sizing or spacing tweaks in the base structure. And those are going to be applied throughout all of these buttons. And that is exactly why we create again these base structures to make this button even more powerful and just that much flexible. So one thing that I do want to talk about is imagine we can have like multiple properties here. So we have button primary, secondary, button secondary, let's just remove this instance, button primary, secondary, tertiary and disabled. We can also have multiple styles. So if you want to have, let's say multiple styles, you can say, I don't know, like button disabled slash a small. And similarly, you can just have a lot of these things. But the problem with that is then you're going to have a lot of these instance here, instances here and it's going to be really hard to actually choose all of these things from this particular list and that is exactly why we use variants and we'll be covering variants in the next video. I just wanted to keep this video short just to explain the button uh, component which is going to hopefully give you an understanding of what this button looks like. I can also again go ahead and enable my arrows here. As you can see the arrows aren't the text that I actually the, the text color that I want them to be so I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to give my arrows a white color here I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to give all of these things a a blue color here I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do the same here a blue 600 and similarly I go here and I'm going to say a gray 
yeah 600 or whatever it is so now let's say if i go ahead and if i change this button as you can see the icons also appear there and i can also again change these icons i can say this is going to be the home icon and this is going to be i don't know flash icon so now if i for example go ahead and change the buttons you can see even the icons are preserving their original state everything looks good and yeah just that's just the power of components in the next video we'll be covering variants and we'll be talking about how they take components to the next level so definitely do check that video out as well uh, but yeah that's pretty much it don't forget to subscribe don't forget to hit the bell icon and don't forget to like and if there's anything specific that you don't get or would you or you would like me to cover then definitely do let me know in the comments thanks a lot